Item number, SCP-075, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-075 is contained in a 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter level 4 corrosion resistant container, which must be contained in a secure chamber with equal corrosion resistance. The absolute humidity of the chamber may not exceed 1% at any time. Medicinal grade desiccants must be available at all times in order to maintain this level of humidity. If the humidity of SCP-075's chamber ever exceeds 1%, all personnel are to be evacuated immediately and the site will be locked down until the humidity is reduced to acceptable levels. All personnel who enter SCP-075's containment chamber must wear MOPP Level 4 protection. Injection tests, as well as any test which involves an aqueous solution, are strictly forbidden. If any such solution comes into contact with SCP-075, the area will immediately be locked down and flooded with desiccant until the humidity is brought back to acceptable levels. Evacuation of personnel remaining in the area is prohibited. Description SCP-075 resembles a large snail, 20 centimeters in length, 13 centimeters in width, and 15 centimeters in height, with a muscular foot resembling a six-fingered clawed hand. SCP-075 is exceptionally heavy, with a mass of approximately 860 kilograms, a property that is not understood. Desiccation is the only known means of containing SCP-075, as it will enter a dormant state when nearly completely dry. When not desiccated, SCP-075 moves at incredible speeds for its size and mass. It adopts the behavior of a predator, jumping at and drenching its prey in a highly caustic base solution secreted from pores on its foot. These secretions are more corrosive than any substance known to terrestrial science. Due to SCP-075's aggressive behavior when active, this compound cannot be harvested. No material completely resistant to its corrosive power has been found. Addendum 075-F Attempts to harvest SCP-075 secretions must be approved and supervised by all on-site Level 4 personnel. However, approval of said personnel cannot override the standing order to not introduce any liquid solution to SCP-075, including its own secretions. Addendum 075-G A cup of SCP-075 secretions was successfully harvested by using SCP-294. Testing is underway to determine what substances, if any, are immune to its corrosion. Testing is also underway to determine why the cup provided by SCP-294 is immune to the substance's effects. Item Number SCP-111 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures All specimens of SCP-111 in captivity are housed at Site-19 in a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter plexiglass enclosure containing a temperate forest habitat transplanted from its natural surroundings. Habitat temperature will be maintained at 30 degrees Celsius. Feeding is to take place weekly by personnel placing 3 kilograms of iceberg lettuce into the containment chamber. Water is to be supplied by an automatic misting system which regulates humidity levels at 50%, both for water required by SCP-111 and to prevent fires. In event of SCP-111 specimens breeding, personnel are to collect all eggs and transport them to the biological studies wing for freezing. Description SCP-111 is an apparently artificial species of invertebrate vaguely resembling snails. Adult specimens of SCP-111 are approximately 20 centimeters in length, 12 centimeters in width, and 15 centimeters in height, although exact size differs slightly between specimens. SCP-111 specimens differ from ordinary snails in that they have a warm-blooded metabolism, complex eyes, small horns consisting of cartilage-ridged tentacles, apparently increased intelligence and a complex vertebrate-type jaw structure. As well, specimens lay eggs possessing hardened shells. Most abnormally, SCP-111 specimens possess small hollow sacs below their lower jaws containing methane from digestive byproducts. A series of data expunged along the inside of the trachea serves as a lighter, igniting stored methane as the specimen exhales, blowing a small jet of flame from its mouth. Said fire breathing generally occurs in event of stress or anger, although is not apparently used deliberately for destruction, but rather as a warning. 
This is presumably due to the limited size of methane sacs, which limits SCP-111 specimens in the amount of fire they can exhale at a time, and requiring both time and starch-rich food to refuel. SCP-111's behavior is inconsistent with that of ordinary snail species, including whistling and hooting vocalizations, easily audible to humans, high intellect seen in such tests as data expunged, and parents caring for their young. Hatchlings have been observed imprinting on their parents, other members of their own species, or researchers. This is presumed to be a deliberate trait based on Document 111A, as it means that hatchlings imprint upon owners. History On a package containing 12 SCP-111 eggs and Document 111A was mailed to Data Expunged, a Foundation Front organization. Mobile Task Force Alpha-4 have proven unable to locate the sender of said package. Document 111-A New from Dr. Wondertainment Dragon Snails The perfect pets for the fantasy-loving child Care and Hatching Instructions 1. Having read this document, take the eggs out of the box. Be careful, dragon snail eggs are fragile. 2. Put the eggs in a warm, safe place and wait 7 to 10 days. 3. Hold your newly hatched dragon snails so they get a good look at you and think you're their mommy. 4. Enjoy your new pet dragon snails. To feed your dragon snails, give your new little friends some raw veggies. Lettuce, Brussels sprouts, beans, any sort of salad stuff you don't want. Remember to give them water, a small glass each, once a day. For your enjoyment, dragon snails come in six types. Breed them for unique pets. Types 1. Slimy Bellies Adorable and oozy little fellows, with awesome fire engine red-colored skin, little black horns and belly, and a speckled tan shell. Beautiful robin's egg blue eggs. 2. Ooze Drakes Inquisitive little creatures, with neat banana-colored skin, curly horns and striped shells, pale tan eggs, like a chicken. 3. Goo Wyverns Dark blue-gray skin, flattened shells, and a bumpy horned head make goo wyverns look like tiny sea monsters. Eggs are a fantastic glassy green color. 4. Blob Worms Green and gold stripes, pointy shells, and a single horn, not to mention fuzzy tails make blobworms wonderful pets. Eggs are tan, with a silver tint. 5. Glow Drakes New from Dr. Wondertainment These little fellows may look like blue-black slimy bellies, until they light up. That's right, glow drakes glow in the dark. Eggs are a golden color with little red dots. 6. Gunk Wyverns Chubby, green-skinned, and dome-shelled. Gunk wyverns make great pets. Eggs are transparent, so you can see the baby dragon snail inside. Parental Notice As Dr. Wondertainment's dragon snails breathe fire, they have been known to cause house fires. For maximum playtime fun and safety, it is recommended that fire extinguishers be kept handy. Despite this, Dr. Wondertainment is not legally, morally, or financially responsible for any injuries, death, or property damage resulting from the unsafe use of dragon snails or any other Dr. Wondertainment products. By reading this document and incubating your dragon snail eggs, you agree to all said terms and forfeit your rights to lawsuits, organized boycotts, protests, honor duels, etc. Enjoy your purchase. Item Number SCP-193 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-193-1 is to be contained in Biosite-42 Biohazard Locker 532-F at all times except during approved experiments. Every 24 hours, all instances of SCP-193-2 are to be removed from SCP-193-1 and incinerated, except on feeding days. Once each week, one instance of SCP-193-2 shall be provided with 30 cc's of human mucus and left in containment with SCP-193-1. Physical contact with any element of SCP-193 without full Level 2 biohazard gear is strongly discouraged. Personnel believed to be suffering from exposure to SCP-193-3 shall report to a supervisor for immediate medical examination and assistance. Description 
SCP-1931 is consistent in external appearance with a box of brand facial tissue. The bottom folds of the box are abnormally complex and house a previously unknown soft-bodied invertebrate. The creature's genetics suggest that it is a member of Phylum Mollusca, but do not match any more specific known taxonomic classification. The cardboard of the box has proven to be a highly specialized shell, generated and maintained by the organism, which will gradually repair damage to the box if able. As compared with cardboard, the shell is many times less flammable and more durable, but is by no means indestructible. SCP-1931 continuously sheds thin segments of its body, instances of SCP-1932, at a rate of roughly one up to five segments per 24 hours, depending on available nutrients and remaining space inside the shell. Instances of SCP-1932 are gradually forced into the main cavity of the shell, where they dry almost instantly. Much as the shell of SCP-1931 resembles a cardboard box, instances of SCP-1932 resemble common facial tissue in appearance and texture. However, both the shell and the segments are composed of chitin, fibroin, and other proteins common in mollusks, as opposed to the expected paper products. When SCP-1932 is brought into contact with the mucous membranes of any mammalian subject, the segment releases 3 to 5 grams of an as of yet unidentified odorless, colorless gas, SCP-1933. If inhaled, SCP-1933 will permeate the sinus tissue and increase mucus production by 500 to 800 percent. In humans, the increased mucus production unsurprisingly results in the need for additional facial tissue, typically leading to further exposure to SCP-1932 and 3 and further mucus production. Repeated exposure to SCP-1933 can, in roughly 70 percent of cases, lead to permanent dysfunction of a subject's mucus production. The resulting symptoms vary but include a variety of respiratory issues, prolonged pneumonia, and, in extreme cases, suffocation. In roughly 10% of cases of repeated exposure, the opposite effect is observed. Damage to the mucus glands is so severe that the subject is left incapable of mucus production. Such subjects are especially vulnerable to inflammatory respiratory diseases, infection, and damage to the lungs due to inhalation of particulate matter. Addendum 193-1 As of Dr. has confirmed additional properties of SCP-1932. When exposed to at least 10 cc of mucus and left unattended, instances of SCP-1932 will attempt to return to SCP-1931 using a combination of bodily oscillation and gas propulsion via controlled emission of SCP-1933. The segments appear to detect possible observers via body heat to determine when they can safely return to SCP-1931 unobserved. This behavior continues in the presence of thoroughly insulated observers, but not in the presence of large artificial heat sources, supporting the theory that SCP-1932 detects heat. On reaching SCP-1931, instances of SCP-1932 will enter through folds in the bottom of the shell reintegrating with the main body. These behaviors, combined with the previously catalogued adaptations, are believed to be the hunting and feeding method of SCP-193. More detailed research into the digestion and dietary needs of the organism are ongoing. The locomotion of SCP-193-2 was discovered following an irregularity in Experiment 193 in which several of the used tissues were left unattended for several minutes. When Dr. returned, he discovered that these instances of SCP-1932 had surrounded the locker holding SCP-1931, but were unable to penetrate containment. Further experimentation led to the discovery of these previously unknown aspects of the organism. Said doctor has been reprimanded for leaving a known organic SCP unsupervised in a testing chamber. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, Subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.